Welcome boys and girls to an episode of Decodable Fun. I am your host, Miss Leah, and this is your teacher, Miss Courtney. In preparation for our lesson today, you will need only a few things. Your listening ears and your two reading eyes. Have fun. Hi everyone, welcome back. Once again, we have some very important things to do today. Let's re review what we are gonna go over today. We are going to identify and decode two syllable words, just like we did with Miss Brandy. We're going to read correctly long and short vowels and one syllable words. We're also going to read words with letter sound correspondences we already know. And we're going to read words that contain double letter consonant sounds another skill we did with Ms. Brandy. And finally, we're going to read decodable text for understanding. To begin, let's review our double letter consonants we did with Ms. Brandy. Remember, these are spellings that have two of the same letters sitting side by side to stand for one consonant sound. Double letter spellings are usually at the end of words, in the middle of longer words, and rarely found at the beginning of words. This double letter spelling occurs in words like dress. The two S's in dress make the S sound. Stuff. The two F's in stuff make the F sound. What are the two double letter spellings in egg? That's right, the two G's make the G sound. Do you remember when double letter consonants usually occur in words? That's right, they usually occur at the end of a word. Today we're going to focus on the last skill Miss Brandy taught us, two syllable words. Remember, words can be broken into chunks called syllables. A syllable has one and only one vowel sound. This means a word has as many syllables as it has vowel sounds. For example, a word with one vowel sound has just one syllable. And a word with two vowel sounds has two syllables. Let's look at some examples. The word pet. Hmm, how many vowel sounds do I hear in that word? Pet. I hear only the short E sound, eh, pet. So that means there's only one syllable. What about the word hat? Hat. How many vowel sounds do I hear in hat, hat? I only hear one, the short A, so that means there's only one syllable. One last example. Unit, unit. I hear a long U at the beginning unit. I hear a short I at the end, so I hear two vowel sounds. So that means two syllables. Now, you try. Hold up one finger if the given word is one syllable and two fingers if the given word is two syllables. Let's go. First word, funny. Okay, the word is funny, so how many vowel sounds do you hear? F funny. You hear the short U, and that Y at the end makes the long E sound, so that's two vowel sounds. So that means how many syllables? Two. Great job, I saw those two fingers up. Next word, ski. What do we look for first to determine the number of syllables? Yes, 
We listen for the number of vowel sounds. Great job. How many vowels do you hear in the word ski? That's right. You hear one long E sound. That I makes an E sound, doesn't it? The long E. So if you only hear one vowel sound, how many syllables? I saw that one finger up. Great job. Our next word is debate. Debate. How many vowel sounds do you hear? Debate. That's right. Two vowel sounds. You hear the long E and the long A. I saw those two fingers for two syllables. Great job. Our last word is beach. Remember, we are not looking for the number of vowels in the spelling, but the number of vowel sounds that we hear. Beach. How many vowels do you hear? Just the long E? That's right. And that makes your one finger up for one syllable correct. Great job. Now we're going to review some of those two syllable words we read with Miss Brandy. You will read the words by blending the sounds in the first syllable, then blending the sounds in the second syllable, and then putting the two syllables together. I will do the first two for examples. Bass, kit, basket. Cat, fish, catfish. Now it's your turn. Him, self, himself. Great job. Sun, tan, suntan. I heard you. You did great. Keep going. Ban, dit, bandit. That's right. Pick, nick. Picnic, you're on a roll. Up, set, upset. Great job. Just two more words. In, vent, invent. That's it. Last word. Con, test, contest. Great! Today, we will be revisiting the first two stories we have already read in this reader. We will be reading The Hot Dog on what page? Yes, page two. We will also be reading The Chicken Nugget on what page is that? You got it, page six. You know the table of contents and how to use it. Great job. Here's the hot dog. First, let's identify all the two syllable words in our first story. Remember, a word has as many syllables as it has vowel sounds. So we are looking for the words that have two vowel sounds or two syllables. Do you see any? Two syllable words. I see drifted. I also see bandit too. Great job. Any more? Wishing. You got it. Do you see any two syllable words on this page? I see bandit too. 
spotted. Great job. Landed. I see that one too. Banded again. Himself. And there's one more two syllable word. Do you see it? Picnic. Great job. Now, let's read our story just reading those two syllable words that we highlighted. Are you ready? Let's go. Drifted, drifted, bandit, wishing, bandit, spotted, landed, bandit, himself, picnic. Way to go, everybody. Now let's read our story. After we read, we're going to be putting events from the story in order. So pay attention to the order in which things happen in our story as we read. Be sure to begin reading with the title. The Hot Dog. Mom had a hot dog. She left the hot dog on a shelf in the den. The hot dog sent up a smell. The smell drifted and drifted. The cat bandit sat on the deck, wishing he had a snack. Then the hot dog smell hit him. Such a smell! Sniff, sniff, sniff! The cat bandit ran in the den. He spotted the hot dog up on the shelf. He got up on a bench. Then he sprang up on the TV set. Then, with a big jump, he sprang up and landed on the shelf. Then, munch, 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 the cat bandit had himself a picnic lunch. What a great story. Let's look at the events we have from the story. We have, then with a big jump, he sprang up and landed on the shelf. We also have, mom had a hot dog. And finally we have, the hot dog smell hit him. That's when the cat bandit smelled the hot dog. Let's put these events in order that they actually happened in the story. Hmm. I remember the first thing to happen was mom had a hot dog. Then I remember the cat bandit smelling the hot dog. Finally, the last thing I remember is the cat bandit sprang up and landed on the shelf. This allowed the cat bandit to eat the hot dog. So first we have mom had a hot dog. Next, the cat bandit smelled the hot dog. And finally, the cat bandit sprang up and landed on the shelf. We have all of these events in order that they happened in our story. Way to go, you all. Let's see if we can do the same skills that we just did with the hot dog with the chicken nugget. First, let's find the two syllable words and read them. Then let's read to put the events in order from the story after we read the story. Are you ready? Great, me too. First, what are those two syllable words? Yes, they're words with two vowel sounds. So let's look at on this page and see if we can see any two syllable words. Remember to look at the title as well. Let's go. I see chicken, nugget, chicken again, nugget, nugget, chicken, do you see any more? That's right, drifted. Any more? Bandit. You got it, napping. 
And finally, sniffing, great job. What about on this page? Do you see any two syllable words here? Bandit, spotted, nugget, thinking. Do you see any more? That's right, closet. Boxes, biggest, bandit, running, boxes again, hopping, only a few more, chicken, and nugget. Great job identifying those two syllable words. Now let's read the story and let's just read, let's read first just the two syllable words we identified. Are you ready? Don't forget that title. Chicken, nugget, chicken, nugget, nugget, chicken, drifted, drifted, bandit, napping, sniffing, Bandit, spotted, nugget, thinking, closet, boxes, biggest, bandit, running, boxes, hopping, chicken, nugget. Great job reading those two syllable words. Now let's read the story and remember at the end of this story, we're going to put the events that happen in the story in order. So be sure to pay attention. Are you ready to start reading? Don't forget the title again. Let's go. The Chicken Nugget. Hank set his dish in the sink. He left a big chicken nugget on the dish. The nugget was still hot. The smell of chicken drifted up from the sink. It drifted into the den. The cat bandit was napping in the den, but he was sniffing as he slept. Sniff, sniff, sniff. The cat bandit sprang up. He ran in and spotted the nugget in the sink. He sat a bit, thinking up a plan. Then. He went to the closet and got a bunch of boxes. He set up a box. Then he set a big box next to that box. Then he set the biggest box next to the sink. The cat bandit set off running. He ran up the boxes, hopping from box to box. Then munch, munch, munch. That was the end of the chicken nugget. I forgot what a great story that was. Now we have the cat bandit was napping in the den. Hank set his dish in the sink and then he set up the biggest box next to the sink where the cat bandit is setting up that biggest box. What happened first in the story? What do you think? Great job. The first thing that happened in the story was that Hank set his dish in the sink. What happened next? Did the cat, the cat bandit was napping or he set the biggest box next to the sink? What happened next? What do you think? Right again. The cat bandit was napping in the den. So that means the last thing that happened is the cat bandit set up the biggest box next to the sink. And remember that helped him eat that chicken nugget. So we have first Hank set his dish in the sink. Next, the cat bandit was napping in the den. And last, he set the biggest box next to the sink. Great job with everything we've done today. Let's review all that we learned today. We identified and decoded 
two syllable words. We read correctly long and short vowel one syllable words. We read words with letter sound correspondences we already knew. We read words that contain double letter consonant sounds. And finally, we read decodable text for understanding. Great job. Thank you, Miss Courtney. And thank you, boys and girls, for your participation in the lesson today. All rights and credits for today's lesson belong to Core Knowledge Language Arts. We would like to thank them for publicly sharing these valuable resource materials. Bye.